Perfect. So welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Julie Candela. I'm from the admissions office and I will definitely help you along the way. So good. At, I know you had met um, Miss Boland, Allison. We are, we do the same thing. So we're like the same person. So help students, you know, get accepted, visit, do scholarships and kind of work with you every step of the way. And that's pretty much what everyone else does too. So I'm going to talk a little bit more, but first I just wanted to just introduce um, Dr. Mark Braspathor. He is our Dean of the College of Business. We have Dr. Ann Renzel. She's our Associate Dean and Professor of College of Business. We have Assistant Dean Kelly Asklar. She's awesome too. And then Melissa, who does a ton of work with us. She's one of our like business managers and she'll kind of explain her role later as well. So thank you everyone for coming. I'm just going to kind of go over the admissions piece in a nutshell um, before we get into the business part of everything. So Niagara uh, was founded in 1856. We are a Vincentian school. We have two sister schools. So St. John's University down in New York and then also DePaul in Chicago. Those are just um, the three of us. But Niagara is the largest private school in Western New York. So we have about you know, 3,000 undergraduate students, which makes us just a little bit bigger than some of the other privates in the area. And we are broken down into five different colleges and an undecided program. Today, obviously we're focusing on the business piece and which I think is the most exciting part. And we're going to go a lot more into that after, but I just wanted to give you a little rundown of um, the whole application process, um, scholarships and financial aid. So if you're interested, are, by the way, are any of you seniors who are in the room right now? Okay, perfect. So when you apply to Niagara, you can use the common application, which I'm sure you guys have heard of, and you can apply to a bunch of schools at once. We are free on there. Or you can use the Niagara University application. And I would really recommend using that one if Niagara is one of your top choices and you really just wanna kind of quickly go through that way. But if you're using the common app anyways, we need your high school transcript right from your guidance office. We are test optional, so we do not require SAT or ACT scores unless you really love your score and you think it'll help benefit you. Um, and we are looking for maybe one to two letters of recommendation and a 250 word essay. So if you can kind of get all of that into us and before Halloween, which is October 31st, you will actually qualify for the Eagle Experience Scholarship, which we are giving out this year. We've given last year too. Um, it's for students who have visited, which virtually counts. So right now counts. And also who apply by Halloween. They'll get $5,000 over the course of four years to go to Niagara. So that's almost like $1,200 a year. And all you have to do is make sure you apply by Halloween because you're already visiting right now by being here. So you have that part done. So that's just a little insight on there. And then also uh, for Mary, for example, we have a legacy scholarship that's a thousand dollars if someone in your family went to Niagara, but we'll get back to that. So you get all of that in, hopefully you'll hear from us, you know, within a couple weeks of the decision. And when you do get accepted, you know, one side will say, congratulations, you're accepted. The other side will say, we are giving you between 10 and $24,000 a year based on all of the hard work you did in high school. So you will get anywhere between 10 and $24,000. So let's say you get the 24, for example, um, that will be every year for four years, you will get to keep that at on you. And of course, when you file financial aid through the FAFSA, which opens up on October 1st, which is this Saturday, um, we will create a financial aid package for you by let's say first week of January. And that's when you can start really working with us and this is where sometimes the business department comes into play too is because we will build up your scholarships even more and give you some more grant money to go to Niagara just by you know working with us demonstrated interest which is what you're doing right now by really just being here today and um, you know communicating with us so you'll definitely be on the list for that um, and it looks like a lot of you it, you know you might be interested in clubs and activities, maybe study abroad. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but just know that if you come to Niagara, it's guaranteed housing for all four years. You can get involved in as little or as you know, much as you want to along with your academic you know, schedule. 
but we also have club sports, division one athletics, which of course I didn't play them, but I did go watch. So we have, you know, basketball, hockey, soccer. A lot of those games are really exciting. There's tailgating. They do. Um, also, we do want you to know that this is not a suitcase school. So for students coming from a distance away from home, we don't want you to think that every weekend students are rolling out to go home for the weekend and you're going to be left on campus board. Niagara gives you a lot to do on the weekend. We have a very busy event schedule. We have carnivals on campus. We have concerts on campus, food trucks, you know, just, you know, laser tag nights. I'm kind of just going off on the different things that we have, but also we will take you off campus to like Bills games, Sabres games, different things you might you know, really find interest in, maybe you want to do ski club. We have a bus that'll take you there. Um, you will not be bored on the weekends and you will have a lot of fun on campus. And most likely I would say you won't want to leave. So that's just a little bit about admissions right now, but we would like you to come on campus, which obviously it seems like you've been here also too, some of you. Um, if you'd like to come, we can even have you sit in on a class maybe with you know, a business student, shadow some classes, go to lunch with them, um, take you on another tour, you know, sit down one-on-one -on -one with financial aid. You can really talk about that. And obviously you will definitely see admissions, but we'd like to create a personalized visit for you too. And the more you visit, the more you'll know it's the place for you, I'd say. So any questions on the admissions piece so far? Okay. Is there anything oh. anyone wants to add? on that, but yeah. Okay. So before we go on, um, Nathan, would you care to tell us a little bit about you? We've heard from both Mary and Godette. Where, where are you from? I'm from Hamburg, New York. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for joining. You're just down the road. That's great. So now that we've heard from Julie, we're going to turn it over to the College of Business. Um, let me see. I have to share my screen here. And um, if this is the right one. Okay, hold on. Okay, so do we have my screen up for people? I'm on a double screen. Is it? It's, it's in, okay. So start from the beginning. And we'll start first with our dean and then we'll proceed on. We're hoping that or expecting within a few minutes that uh, one of our economics professors will be joining us. He's in class, but he was going to come on maybe about 420 or 430. So We'll go, we'll go with him when he gets here. So Dr. Frascator. Great, thank you. Um, welcome everybody. And, and Mary, I wanted to mention, um, is that a Jackson Pollock? I just saw the painting behind you. It looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. Uh, yeah. He's one of my favorite artists. So, so thank you. So yeah, you, you should come to Niagara then. So yeah, we like people with good taste. So let me, I want to talk a little bit about um, Again, my name is Mark Basker, I'm Dean of the College and, and welcome. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about just some overview things. Uh, and then so Dr. Rensel and Dr. Tiedemann will talk about academics. Um, Kelly Asklar will talk about student support. But we like to say that here in the College of Business, we do business with purpose. And, and what that means is it actually has many meanings. Um, we are a Catholic Vincentian University. Um, that means that we value the mission of St. Vincent de Paul, which is uh, service ethics and, um, and helping those who cannot help themselves. But also we are committed to the transformation of our students through engagement, student engagement, through globalization and ethical behavior. So I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. And, uh, and if you could advance the screen. So what do we mean by the engagement? We, it really starts with our faculty and the interaction between them and our students. Our faculty, I like to say, are teachers, scholars, practitioners, and mentors. Uh, scholars, they do publish. They are, they put, we publish in leading international journals, um, cutting edge research. They are, we value teaching really above anything else that we do here within our college. We have really good teachers here. They're also practitioners. So most of our faculty are, have either been in industry or have certifications like CPAs. Uh, they, many of our faculty still work in industry. We do visits to companies. 
Um, it's really a hands-on uh, type of type of relationship, and they're mentors. So it's not just about teaching, but our faculty help students with career advice, setting up with internships, um, anything really that any sort of extracurricular activities that happens outside the classroom, our faculty are there for our students. It is not uncommon that faculty will bring, our, will bring their classes to visit companies and students will sit in the seats of the employees and see what it's like to be there. I mean, that's really how you get a feel for what an industry is like. Um, what's it like to be a marketing executive? What's it like to be a logistics manager? Uh, we do that. We go out there and we sit there and, and, and students help do the jobs. We have faculty who lead uh, students to conferences and expos, competitions, um, things like that. Um, faculty are in for competitions. They are the advisors for student groups. Like for example, our Niagara University Marketing Association fields uh, a team of marketing students who attend conferences. Um, one of them I think is going to Las Vegas this year. And they work on projects for local businesses. They help out to solve real problems. They do, we have something that's called a VITA program, volunteer income tax assistance, where we have a group of students who go out into the community and help people do their taxes, typically elderly, disabled folks, others who cannot get into uh, to a CPA or afford a CPA to do their tax. Our students do it for free. And again, that's under the guidance of a faculty uh, as advisor for the program. So these types of things go on all the time. So that's really the engagement aspect of it. This is outside of the curriculum and students uh, participate in these things all the time. So if we could, next slide, please. There we go. So we are also a accredited by AACSB and AACSB is the leading accrediting body in the world, and fewer than 5% of colleges in the world have this. They, we, in AACSB, um, it is a network of colleges and universities and a professional organization that visits colleges who are accredited to review and consult and make sure that they are doing what they say they're doing. So a college that is AACSB accredited uh, you can be sure that they are doing what they say they're doing. They're, they're, leading, uh, they're leading edge in assurance of learning and that faculty are qualified, the curriculum is, is relevant, and that, the, that we support our students. Um, a thing that I, I mentioned, um, uh, that I, I'm sorry, I neglected to mention a second ago is part of our engagement activity includes international travel. And we really expect that all of our students will do an international trip of some form. So for example, this uh, January, I'm actually traveling with a group of students to Italy. And I took a group of students to Italy last May as well. Um, there's another group going to London to study the financial systems and to visit banks there. Uh, I'm doing a food marketing trip to Italy where we're gonna do the Italian food industry. So imagine visiting uh, companies like Barilla Pasta uh, the Montepulciano wine region. Uh, we do a cooking class. We have a chef who leads a cooking class in Rome. So these are the types of trips and engagement activities that you can participate in. And in fact, that we really expect all of our, all of our students to do. So all of these things are available to you. Okay, next slide, please. And with that, uh, to talk a little bit about the academics, I think I'm turning it over to Dr. Rensel, who will talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So hi, hi everyone. Um, like I said, thanks for joining. Um, I'm waiting for Dr. Tiedman to come in. So while we're waiting for him, I was going to go through what we offer in the way of academics and just some highlights as we um, take a look at what's, what's available. So first, we have an accounting program. We have a four plus one, which means you would complete your accounting program in four years. And with one additional year, you would uh, be a have um, finish with an, a master's degree. We just came up with a very innovative three plus one accounting program, which for our high performing students who come in with a tremendous number of credits from AP courses or from community colleges, they can, we've restructured the curriculum slightly and they finish their undergraduate degree in three years. And then the additional year necessary to sit for the CPA exam can come from the extra year. So this is a new program. We have several of our incoming freshmen involved with it. So it's a new opportunity, I think, to be 
um, to explore and, and get into the accounting field, which right now is one of the hottest job markets um, in the whole US at this point. Within the accounting, we have a minor in fraud, which is cross-disciplinary. It's a mixture of our accounting courses combined with criminal justice courses, along with some courses from the computer science area. And we also have a minor in data analytics for everyone, not just accounting students, but it's, it's, it's uh, housed in the accounting department. And this particular minor in data analytics is a combination of courses here in the college, as well as more courses over in the computer science area. We have a degree in economics, and I will let Dr. Tiedman discuss that when he joins. We also have a major in finance with deep connections into both the Toronto as well as the New York City financial markets. Uh, we have a major in management, and our management major is one of our is our largest. And it's broken into four concentrations at the current time. We have supply chain, we have human resources, international, and for a person who wants to perhaps start their own business, consider uh, being an entrepreneur, working in a family business, we have our integrative or general management area, which allows a student to customize what they want with regard to what to study in the management area and to focus in areas perhaps that we don't have our concentrations with. Our last but not least major is marketing. We have a, we have a solid standard marketing program, which covers all of your uh, major areas like marketing research and uh, consumer behavior, those types of courses. But we have two specialized tracks or concentrations here as well. One is the food and consumer packaged goods marketing, which is tied to the trip that Dr. Frascator will be taking in uh, January. And we also have a new one, which is social media and digital marketing. I did want to circle back to the food and consumer packaged goods marketing and comment that we are expanding that program and broadening it for the, unit, for the whole college so that we now have what we call the food industry leadership program and the reason why we're doing this, this broadening of this curriculum is because, number one, in Western New York, we have one of the highest densities of food producers in the United States, as well as food, um, as well as food manufacturing. Um, in addition, we have a very strong and interested advisory board who really like to work with our students, and they're in the tend to be in the food and packaged good in industry. So with these types of resources, it just made sense to broaden the opportunity to get to gain knowledge about the food industry while you're studying not just marketing, but accounting, economics, finance, or management, because all these major disciplinary areas are necessary to provide uh, support and strength to the, to the food industry. So this is an overview. Um, Dr. Tiedman may be stuck in class, so we'll just continue on. And then when he comes, we'll pop back. Um, along the way, I think everybody's focus is on where a degree will take you, what your opportunities are. So to launch your career, first off, internships and career experience. We, all of us encourage our students to have at least one internship. A lot of our students are now starting to have two internships. Some of our accounting students, in fact, are in such high demand, some of them are on their third or fourth internship at this point. So the idea is, is built into our program is the capacity and the capability for you to gain real world industry experience as you're moving through your, your studies. We provide an opportunity for mentoring with some top business professionals. This is a fairly new program. However, students are really enjoying it. It's an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with some of our executives who sit on our advisory boards and other people in their companies. It's an opportunity to build your network, get some real world guidance from those people. Along as well, we are starting to focus more and more on additional credentials that you can pick up in addition to your degree here at Niagara. So if you're in the accounting program, we get you well prepared for the CPA. There's also an opportunity if you're 
not interested in a professional accountancy, but more a managerial role, we have a CGMA program as well. Within our marketing group, they provide Google Analytics certifications. Uh, and within our, our finance program, we prepare you for to sit for the CFA. And depending on who's teaching some of our more technically focused classes, there's opportunities to get certified in Excel, QuickBooks, in, in those particular areas. So what we're trying to do is structure our program so you get more value while you're here. Also, you have the opportunity to complete a graduate courses during your undergraduate program. This prepares you for the next step in your career, and you can take up to two of those courses. We're very proud to say that we have a 97% placement rate for graduates, and it's something that we really uh, work hard to make sure that our students do well. So I just admitted <clears throat> Dr. Tiedman. So I'm going to stop sharing these slides and let him take over for a few minutes, just to give you a little bit of a flavor of what happens in our classrooms and some of the energy that our, that our professors have. So Craig, go right ahead. Uh, sounds good. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Renzel. And it's great to meet everybody here. Uh, to see several uh, people that are attending to learn more about NU uh, and the whole Shoe College of Business. I actually came just from class right now, so my apologies for joining you a little bit late, um, but I'm sure you're in great hands here. Uh, I know I've been thinking about some of the things uh, that we do in class. I, I think a lot of uh, our, our projects here are, are you know, student-centered, and they're focused on you know, the interests and uh, uh, you know, areas that, that, that students want to focus in on. And so I think one of the things that I like to talk about a lot in sessions like this uh, is to talk about some of the, the uh, econometric projects that uh, I have students uh, that mostly will take this class in the spring semester. This is mostly focused for students that are like near the end of their time, uh, you know, with us here at, on Monteagle Ridge. Uh, so juniors and seniors, um, but I've had, I think I've had a sophomore before too. And the goal of this class is to learn uh, regression techniques and how you could apply them um, in, you know, in business settings. Um, and one of the main ways that my students do that is through uh, working with me through, you know, uh, developing like uh, uh, their own uh, individual regression project, right? So they come up with some topic or, uh, you know, area that they want to research in or to focus in on. They then go out and then find data, create a data set, um, working with, and then from that, they start running regressions. Uh, which is looking at relationships between different, uh, you know, different phenomena that exist in the world and to test hypotheses they might have. Um, so uh, to kind of like make this a little bit less abstract, uh, some of the fun examples my students have really got into the last few years is I had um, one student two, year, uh, two years ago, and he was highly motivated uh, by the idea of trying to prove his friend wrong when his friend thought um, that, uh, you know, Eli Manning is a Hall of Fame worthy quarterback. Right. His friend was a Giants fan and he, you know, just detested the Giants. And he was like, no, Eli is trash. Eli is not somebody who should be a quarterback. He just was lucky winning his two Super Bowl rings. So he went out. He, this was his goal. So he went out and he collected all this data on different historical quarterbacks, trying to figure out what types of data were important for determining, you know, predicting which quarterbacks would be going to the Hall of Fame, which ones wouldn't. And then from that database, he then built this statistical model where he could figure out, OK, how much value are each of these, you know, like Super Bowl wins or career passing rating or things like that. And from that, he then put in Eli Manning's uh, statistics from his career. And uh, I guess happily for him, it would have been kind of a sad story if it ended up, if he had found based on his model that it wouldn't, that Eli would be qualified for the Hall of Fame. But he predicted that Eli, I think, would only have like a 40% chance or 30 something percent chance that he would make it in. Uh, so, of course, when, as soon as he found this out uh, on his own, he like emailed me and he was like, oh, Dr. Tiedemann, this is so great. Like, I can't wait to show this off to my, you know, to my friend and tell him that Eli Manning is just completely overrated. Uh, is, and, you know, it's not, not worth it as, as a quarterback, you know, completely overhyped. I had another student I know that worked on this last year and he was interested in MMA fighting. And so he was looking at, I know actually both Dr. Renzel and, Dr., and uh, Dean Frascator were there to see his presentation. And so he was talking all about trying to determine what statistics could be used to predict uh, the salary of an MMA fighter, right? And then compare that from his model to the actual to see whether or not uh, the fighter is actually underpaid or overpaid. Um, and so he was really into this. In fact, I remember uh, at, our, uh, at our, um, uh, our awards event that we have for families, which is always a great time at the very, in the senior year, he was actually discussing his model 
with his friends at the table. And I always think, you know, it makes you feel good as a professor if, you know, you know students are willingly discussing homework and certainly not in a, ne in a negative light, right? That they're so into it. And that, that's kind of the goal of this project. I've had other students be a little more, you know, business focused. I had one person who was trying to use it, uh, you know, to, to build a model related. He worked in the used car industry. I had someone, uh, you know, who was trying to figure out what types of donors would give more to try to build like a, you know, like a model to predict who we should try to focus our energy on at working on, uh, uh, they like donor relations in the nonprofit sector. Uh, so there's many examples of this. And what I love about projects like this and something that's unique to us here at, at NU is that we have a small enough class size. I mean, that, that class usually is around 10 to 12 students. I've had actually one section, but it was like uh, six students. And so I meet one-on-one -on -one with these students uh, at least like several times throughout the semester. And sometimes again, they'll just drop in They'll, you know, like be like, hey, I'm running into this problem and I'm happy to kind of troubleshoot with that student. Um, and certainly there are other classes that do similar types of projects like this. And that's something, again, that I know when, when I was an undergraduate student, I didn't have that chance. Uh, I wasn't I was in a little bit larger institution than NU. Right. And so therefore, it gives you an ability to really like work one on one with faculty that we pride ourselves on uh, here in the Holshu College of Business. Um, I think the other uh, another another area to think about, and I'm sure maybe you've heard a little bit about this. Uh, so uh, I hope I'm not repeating too much other, what others have said, but we have lots of great opportunities uh, for engagement within the, the clubs and extracurricular groups that we have here at the Holshu College of Business. Uh, I know in my own department, uh, we have several examples. So uh, one, one example that I've worked with is we have a data analytics team and uh, they are, it's part of like a, an independent study type course that meets in the spring uh, that, uh, you know, Dr. Caruso, also in my department, is the main person, main driving force behind, but I know I like to try to help him out. Dr. Renzel has also helped him out. And uh, it's, it's really a lot of fun. Uh, I'm sure I, I can speak for Dr. Renzel. It's one of the, the highlights of the spring semester, right? Because uh, they're given a problem or a question to address, and it's been anything from uh, housing to uh, uh, like thinking about COVID and pandemic uh, responses and preparedness. And they're given all this data and they have to figure out creative ways to answer these questions and to use data tools to be able to analyze this data. Um, and so like they're working as a team and they develop a presentation and they only have like five to eight, mi 10 minutes to present. So that really focuses them, you know, which is a great skill for employers that they want, right? How can you, you know, like reduce everything down to the, the key and most important information. And so that's uh, something I love helping them, working with them on. Uh, I know that the, the finance club, which is a big group here in uh, my eco, uh, economics and, and finance department, uh, they work, they manage something known as the Monteagle Fund, which some of our universities endowment, uh, that's that money, uh, they get to make decisions over, you know, where is that money invested or not? And I know uh, hearing from Professor Hutton, who is their advisor, uh, they actually have to go, some of them have to go and actually defend these decisions in front of the board of trustees, um, including actually the namesake of the college uh, in, in the past, so, which was quite the experience because he was working for I think, like, was it like Morgan Stanley, uh, like that. So he was, yeah, so it was quite an experience for those students, something that really prepares you for their career in the future. Um, and I know uh, we're getting started too this year, uh, the, the Fed Challenge team. Uh, Dr. Ensafoa, a new faculty here, um, kind of like he's the main driving force, but we're going to be helping him. And again, it's where you try to, there's so many interesting things going on right now in the macro economy. I'm sure you're hearing all about interest rates, inflation, you know, it's all over the news. You can't really, you know, it'd be hard to not hear about it these days, right? So again, like, you know, trying to, uh, you know, work as if you were the Federal Reserve Bank and, you know, offer recommendations. So again, these are all opportunities, not only to develop your skills, things that employers love to see. They're fun activities, right? It's not just sitting in class, hearing lectures, right? These are engaging, active learning uh, approaches to, you know, trying to develop your skills. And it's great ways to interact with faculty, right? In pretty small, small group settings. Uh, that is something that we pride ourselves on. Um, so I hope that's kind of like the main things I wanted to talk about. I don't know if there's anything else to discuss, but that just kind of gives you a flavor of what you can expect if you, you know, hopefully come join us here at, at, at Niagara. Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry, I had a little bit of a, my machine is running slow. Thanks, Craig. Um, no, the uh, working with the teams and the groups of students is is fabulous. Um, the, the, uh, uh, I look forward to seeing the Fed Challenge team. Um, I worked with them a few years ago. And the analytics team, um, those presentations are done through Manhattan College. So 
the not only are we internal, but we do reach externally. So I'm going to reshare and just um, let Kelly speak a little bit about what we're doing with regard to our students and other opportunities. So one second here, I'm trying to get this thing moving. So personal support, Kelly. Thanks, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Pencil. Okay, everyone. So I bet you you're wondering how you get to be in Dr. Cheneman's class. Well, just so you know, we're all housed in one building. So you will, um, if you choose to come here, you will run into him frequently. And he um, is a very energetic and very sought after professor. Um, he is also a faculty advisor. That's part of the personal support that we offer here. Uh, you will meet with a, uh, an advisor every semester, um, one being Dr. Cheaterman, one being Dr. Renzel, who is also on this um, Zoom. And uh, in addition to that, you'll be meeting with me um, periodically as you choose. Um, we're always here in the Dean's office. And if you need something or need to be pointed a direction or have a question about a class or just, um, just wanna talk, you can make an appointment at the Dean's office and um, the door is always open. Um, speaking of faculty, we also have faculty mentors. So this is kind of showing you how the faculty is very involved with the students. Uh, faculty likes for you to come to their office. They'd like to, to meet you, talk to you, get to know things, hear of your ideas, help you, assist you, um, do research with you. It's not a school environment where you're sitting in a huge uh, classroom listening to lectures and not becoming involved. Um, I actually encourage our students to go meet with their professors and um, get to know them. And it's, it's a win-win situation. It's really a great opportunity and I highly recommend it. We also have um, an academic success center in the center, there's all kinds of um, help for you if you need uh, to go to the writing clinic or you need a math tutor, or if you have accommodations, uh, they'll, they'll help you with anything that you need, just getting organized, um, checking in to make sure that you're staying on track, studying skills, that kind of thing. Um, it's very successful with our students. They, they can help you, say if you need a little help in a class, it, it, it will, it could up your grade by, you know, if say you have a B, maybe you'll get a B plus or an A minus or something like that. It's really useful. Um, we also have within the college, we have an accounting tutor and we have an economics tutor. These tutors are the best students in their class. They were the top of the class and they are chosen to help assist our students. Sometimes when you're in class, maybe you just need to work with somebody or talk to somebody um, and learn. They can explain things in a different way. Sometimes that's helpful. So we do offer that. We have career services. You'll meet career services right away. Career services is where we have our internships. We have our job offerings to them. They will help you learn how to talk in um, a networking situation. They will teach you how to write a resume. They will help you fine tune your resume. Uh, we have a, a platform that you can sign on to and we encourage that as a freshman where you can learn about the opportunities out there um, and kind of keep your finger on the pulse of what's available and what's coming to campus. We also have learn and serves as well where you can learn about a business, see if that's really the business that you want to be in. And we have um, on campus, we have uh, um, events where you can meet diff where co different companies come. You can meet them for interviews, resumes, and that kind of thing. Give them your resumes or just talk to them to find out what services they offer and see if that's a good fit for you. Um, in this day and age with um, coming out of COVID, many of our students also use our counseling services. They are on campus. Um, if you just reach out and ask, we're here to help. We can guide you to, to where you need to be. And we also are posting it around campus for students who um, would like to keep that private. It's a private thing and personal thing. The College of Business Alumni Network is um, just so strong. You're part of the family once you start here. 
working from or, or your, the faculty to the staff to your your fellow students and your cohort. And if you ever need anything, we're here to help you with jobs or um, just make connections. If you move out of the area, you can always come back to Niagara and count on that we will have you. Um, you will know somebody or we can put, hook you up with somebody that is, um, is advantageous to you. So the opportunities that we have. So you're in high school right now. And one of the great things I think is that you have an opportunity to take courses. And Dr. Renzel was talking about the three plus one um, prior for the accounting program. And it, if you want to speak to us, we allow our students to, um, I can give you my card and you can contact me and I can help you pick out classes that you can take that will count towards credit here, whether it's AP, whether it's a dual credit, um, I can guide you in that way. We love when you bring those courses in because it, it helps you to either expedite your, um, your career here or you can slow things down. The other thing that it does is it allows, it may allow you to open up to, to minors or possibly double majors, which is not impossible. It sounds like a lot, but we do um, highly encourage that within the college. It, it will make you stand out and make you unique um, within your field of study. Study abroad, Dr. Frescatore talked about that, our new center of global citizen, citizenry. So um, we're just getting that up and, and running. And study abroad is a fantastic opportunity for you to um, become worldly. Um, business is worldly. And we have short-term opportunities and we have long-term, meaning you can go for 10 days, like with Dr. Frescatore, or you can go and study abroad for a month. That's what, Or you can do both, actually. Um, the study abroads do count as coursework, but that's what we would work through when you get here. Clubs and events, I think we touched on that um, pretty much that there's so much to offer here. Honor societies, we have many honor societies and we also have events that, that coincide with that. And we do allow our students to take graduate courses during their undergraduate program. If you have a 3.0 or better and um, you're interested in taking the graduate courses, you need to take business electives anyways. So if you have this opportunity, why not embrace taking graduate courses your last year um, at Niagara? I did wanna uh, mention quickly before we move on is that you have, you don't have to worry about what you're taking when you come here. This might sound all overwhelming. Um, Professor Tiedemann, you know, you're like, wow, what is that? And that's, that would be you, you that would be you moving down, down the line. But, in the beginning, you'll be taking all the same courses as every business major um, when you enter Niagara. So you have about a year to a year and a half to figure out what major really suits you well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me and I'm happy to help. <clears throat> and so with that, we'll say we're done with the formal part of our, our, our presentation. Um, I've put up the contact information for all of us today and especially um, contact information for Julie Candela, who is your admissions contact and was our hostess today. So we're going to stop sharing at this point. And I was gonna say, we're open to some questions. Any questions? No? Okay. Julie, like do you have now. any? What? What was Sounds that like word? We nailed it. Yeah, I guess. Julie, do you have some more closing comments? Um, I just want to let you all know I'm here if you need me. I know some of you already met with your specific admissions advisor, but we will help you every step of the way. Make sure you apply by Halloween. I know Gadette did. She told me she did. So that's great. Um, and we will, you know, keep you on track, have you back for more specific events, maybe an overnight. And we look forward to working with you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Emmanuel has a question. Oh, good. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Emmanuel? Emmanuel? You had your hand up? 
He might have mistakenly hit the raised hand. Yeah, button. he may yeah. have for sure. So, any questions from anyone else? Oh, he said unmute me. Oh. Unmute him. Okay, Julie, how do we do this? Let's see. Daniel, can you unmute yourself in the here. lower left of your screen? How do I make myself the host again? Can I do that? I don't know. I that. haven't asked to unmute, but I don't have control over that. Emmanuel, do you want to use the chat function and maybe ask okay. us what the I'm question is? Yes, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, it's we have short. to do that. Um, I'm in his thing right now. It says is asked to unmute. So I clicked I on did, that. Oh, he's I typing. Did that. He's typing. Okay. Nice. I don't think we're muted though. I think he's muted on his end. I don't think yeah, we're he's muted, muted and, and the unmute um, wasn't responding. So so we'll just wait and see what he's typing. So So Nathan, we didn't have a chance to talk too much with you while um, Emmanuel is typing. Um, any particular area of business you're interested in? Any questions we can ask you? I was looking into like more the applied math side, like actuary. Okay. So the actuarial science portion, there's a substantial portion of finance that's buried into that program. A lot of our students will do actuarial and sometimes double major with finance or vice versa. Um, the uh, actuarial program is, is very robust and it is very, um, has a, a tremendous amount of work that needs to go into it, but it's a, an extremely interesting field. So if you take a look at our curriculum, you see the finance portion coming from our side and then you have the applied math. So you might wanna check with, um, our arts and sciences people, our math department, for more information about the specifics but from a finance portion, then um, you would be over here with us for that. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm looking at um, Emmanuel's question. He's looking primarily at the graduate level for the MSF. Um, Emmanuel, I would suggest that you can either contact our US uh, graduate department or the Ontario Canada graduate department for more specific information and each do carry and have online live webinars like this. Um, you would contact uh, Sarah Barrancata over here in the US or you would contact Jose Gonzalez in Ontario. I hope that answered your question. Okay. Did you see Mary's okay. question, Anne? No, I didn't. Mary, Mary's oh, more, to okay. learn more about the food industry food leadership industry. program. So Mary, what we're doing with the food industry leadership program is we have your discipline. So let's say you're interested in, let's say finance. So within the, so you're pursuing your finance discipline, you're taking your finance classes. But what we've done is we've highlighted four classes that are specifically focused on the food industry, which give you insight into how that specific industry works. And then you can apply that information, your finance background in that particular context. So for example, the courses we have, we have a global food industry, we have a global food industry course. We have a course in food logistics. We have a course that is focused on food procurement. That, we are, that we're revising, it'll be on play in the spring. That's when we give that particular course. Then we have some other specific courses that have content that is food related in them that we suggest that you take. So what we've done is we've taken your specific discipline interest, but just given you a little deeper knowledge in the food industry. And what it also does, it opens you up to work with some of our food executives and to participate in some very interesting and very exciting uh, internships that are related to Sorrento cheese, uh, Rosina Foods, um, our local, I'm sure in Virginia, you have someplace, a Wegmans store, I believe. We do a lot with Wegmans. Um, we have a lot of 
all different tiers of relationship there. And then we also um, have opportunities across a little more specific areas, but very vibrant uh, food industry. So that's exactly how that's working. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking. It's one of our new programs, it's exciting. Um, what is Godet? How many programs? Kelly, do you wanna answer that one? From Godet, how many programs are students allowed to take? You're, you're muted. Okay, you're I, good. I don't see the question. Okay, um, she's asking, how many programs are students allowed to take? Um, um, Godet, do you mean um, how many majors or areas? Yeah. Minors? Well, typically we start out with one. And, and then if you have an interest, you can, I, I like to work towards something. So what happens, it depends on how many credits you're bringing in. It depends where your interests are. And then you can take more than one. We just had one person graduate with two minors and three majors. So, um, and it depends on the time you wanna spend here. So that's where we come in, the faculty advisors and myself to help you balance it out, to figure out your pathway through to get the most out of your four years here, three, four, five, it depends how long you're staying. So it's not uncommon, say for somebody in marketing to have a communication double major or marketing to have um, a psychology major sometimes or a major, a double or a minor and a uh, something else like um, supply chain um, and something else of interest on campus, maybe um, social work, or you can really do whatever you want and make it unique to yourself, but you have to plan out your time. It's all about the time management so we can get the most out of what you want. I would say two is usually typical, two majors, you know, one, one primary and then another major, and sometimes one or two um, minors along with that. And that's a lot. Does that answer your question? Any more questions? But Godet, okay. if you wanna contact me, if you have specific questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay, any more, any more questions? We good? Thank okay. you everyone. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you, Julie. Thank, thank you everyone you. else for joining. If you have more questions, please let us know. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thank day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.